Okay, this week's topic is coming out at school. Um, I never really came out at school because at the time I had no idea what being trans was. By the time I found that out, I was in university, and so far I've come out as uh, as trans at three different universities while a student. Um, the first time I kind of half-assed it, the second time I was largely unsuccessful, and the third time I mostly got it right. Um, the first time I came out was in Japan, where I was living as an exchange student, uh, and we had this introductory thing with all the people in the exchange program, and I introduced myself by my birth name. And I remember instantly regretting that and thinking, oh, stupid, 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 why did I do that? And the odd thing was, I didn't even understand why I thought that, because I hadn't even thought of any alternative or anything. I just knew that when everybody turned to look at me when I got up and started talking, that that's not how I wanted people to know me. Um, so my first purchase in Japan, after some bread, peanut butter and a bottle of tea, um, was a pair of scissors, which I used to cut off all my hair. And then there was this extraordinary bit of luck, um, because it turned out that some male students had been asked to be extras in this movie, and they came back home one day with all this cash, uh, and so I asked them what was up with that, and they told me that they had been asked to play extras in this movie, and that they were getting paid a lot of money just to prance around in a silly costume. So I said I wouldn't mind making a bit of extra money by prancing around in a silly costume, um, but they said I couldn't because the casting agency only wanted men. So I said, I bet I could swindle my way onto that cast list anyway, which they thought would be such a famous scheme to carry off that some of the guys actually lent me some clothes and helped me sneak onto the set, and from there on I, I snuck myself onto the payroll. Um, so with my first day salary, I started buying my own men's clothes, and I just kept wearing them when everything was done, and that's how it got started. Um, I had to come up with a male name, of course, on the set, and everybody just kept using that afterwards, and um, the use of male forms of address stuck with a lot of people too. But then at the university, because um, the, these were the students that I lived with, but at the university itself, aside from this one teacher who caught on, I didn't know whether it'd be worth trying to explain it all to everybody, um, especially since it was all pretty tentative and experimental on my part as well. So I began living this weird double life where the university saw one side of me and then people outside the university um, saw me present as a male, and then people in the program with whom I was living, they got to see the whole bizarre song and dance as it unfolded. Um, Actually, I was really happy with how things were going there, because even though the whole leading a double life thing was at times stressful and at times also a big drain on my energy, I knew that for me it wasn't a permanent arrangement, and at the same time it gave me an opportunity to weigh my options. So um, that was my first university coming out. Um, it wasn't complete, it wasn't all out in the open, but it was open enough for me at the time, and I was happy with it. And then I came back to the Netherlands, and that all fell away. Um, it actually felt like all this personal development that I'd been working through for the past seven or eight months abroad suddenly completely lost all of its validity. Um, because when I came back, everybody was expecting a girl, and they treated me accordingly, and expected me to act accordingly, and expected me to pick up my old life where I left off. Um, and having my sport network pulled out from under me, and having lost the freedom that I had to be whoever I wanted to be, wanted to be, and to wear whatever I wanted to wear, um, was actually what propelled me to contact the only gender clinic that I knew of in the Netherlands. Uh, but I got turned away, which obviously didn't help with seeking validation for my identity. And then the new semester rolled around, uh, which was the last semester of my BA, and I realised that it would probably be wiser to come out. I was getting a lot of questions, I was getting a lot of stupid remarks, um, I was getting a lot of looks, and there was a lot of gossip. Um, and I figured that coming out might at least help clear things up for people. But the problem was, I didn't, at the time, have the fortitude, I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the resources or even the knowledge necessary to explain clearly to other people what was going on. Um, and most of the time, because I did come out to some people, but most of the time I just felt too detached and too uninvested in 
the place and the people to put in the effort. Um, and my first class started out with the teacher looking into the classroom and saying, this was really the first thing she said. She said, oh, there's no boys in this class. That's too bad. And I was just sitting there going, uh, sorry. And what I said was, uh, I resent that remark, to which the teacher replied, oh, I, I just meant that, uh, that that means that we can't have any proper discussions about, you know, gender and stuff. And stupidly, instead of addressing either of those statements and calling them out, I just turned into the biggest hater ever all semester, which didn't really help anyone. Um, I mean, firstly, this teacher just thought that I was some rampant man-hater, and I think, I think, based on some of the questions that she asked me, I think she suspected I had some sort of history of abuse at the core of my non-existent man-hate, and mm. that was really, really disconcerting. People just kind of assumed off the clothes I was wearing that I was a man-hater. It was so weird. In other classes, I'd show up in men's clothes, in, in my clothes, including this sort of semi-gender studies class. And even there, even there, people would say stuff like, oh, are you doing, like, a uh, dress-up for class? That's so cute. I mean, really? Really? Um, I was actually just yearning for someone to ask a direct question and not to make all kinds of ridiculous assumptions. I mean, if you want to know, just ask. Especially because they would ignore when I corrected my name, and they would ignore when I corrected my pronouns, or they would try and subtly correct me back. And I think I know who I am. And then they would make assumptions about what my clothes meant, but they would never actually ask. And I, I admit, I, I aggravated the situation um, quite a bit by trying to provoke people to ask a direct question, but I never actually sat any of my teachers down and said, Look, I'm trans, here's what that means for me, and here's what that means for our personal interactions. It seems really easy now. It seems so easy, but at the time, it really was not. Um, aside from the dysphoria and my support network at my previous university being pulled out from under me, and feeling like here everybody around me was trying to push me into one box or multiple boxes that didn't fit, um, I think that what my biggest hurdle was, uh, was that I knew of virtually no trans resources. Um, I didn't know any trans people, I didn't know any trans organisations, I only knew this gender clinic from which I'd been turned away, and I did not have any resources. Which, when the semester ended, was the first thing that I set out to remedy. And then I enrolled at another university, and I had decided beforehand that I was going to come out and be direct about it in order to prevent a, a rerun of the situation at my previous university. And the funny thing is, um, it's not actually funny, but it was kind of funny. What propelled me to come out uh, at this university was one of the things that had previously set me against coming out at the other one. Because the first class I went, I went to, the first class, the teaching assistant started off by saying, Oh, what a shame. We don't have any boys in class this year. And I thought, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. But what I said was, I resent that remark. And what she replied to that was, Oh, no, I, I didn't mean that we need men per se. I, I just meant that, in my experience, having boys in the class as well livens up the discussions on sexism and gender and things like that. And I said, ah, but what I meant was that we seem to have a misunderstanding here. Um, you see, I don't really object to the presence of men. That would be awkward, because I am one. And people kind of went, uh, and then some people went, ah, and then some people went, oh. And I took my teachers aside in the break, and we talked it over, and they were very gracious about it. They said, you know, I, I said this thing about um, there's no men in the class. And then I looked around and I thought I may have just made a kind of offensive mistake. Sorry about that. Um, and it was just great to to not just start off by talking to people who had a working knowledge of what trans was, but also to be able to ha to have this opportunity to to reverse the situation that 
was kind of the start where it all went wrong at the previous university. And so to avoid confusion in all my other classes, since I'd now already brought it up and done it before, I just went up to all the teachers beforehand, before class, and explained that the name on the list was incorrect, that I was a trans man, that the list should say Jonathan, and that if they had any questions, I could direct them to relevant resources and reading. And I did spend four years answering a lot of questions from some teachers and a lot of students. And a handful of those questions were pretty shit. But all in all, it was very much worth it because with respect to being trans, I felt far more comfortable. Um, and also it forced me to get a lot more serious about educating myself on trans related subjects. And I think that it's helped clear the way a bit as well for other trans people who, who came after me. Actually, I know it did because I know a couple who have. Um, and that's a worthwhile thought. And being out also put me in a position to do a lot more for other trans people. So in my experience coming out, once I got it right, um, has been a really good experience. And I've also learned that it pays off to be direct, uh, to just explain what you want explain who you are, and then other people can take it or leave it. And so that was my experience coming out in university. Like I said, I never came out in school, so I didn't have to deal with that. 